Stargate Voyager. I think we're looking again at a lost technology. And it was this ancient apocalypse 12,800 years ago that wiped that from the human memory banks. Why were these ancient elongated skulled peoples or humanoids of Malta living underground? Now I believe we're talking prior to 9700 BC for the original construction of the Sphinx. And they were what some people have called giants, probably no more than seven to eight feet tall. And those giants have been pulled out of American mounds. Whether it's the colossal statue heads that have been unearthed, to all the strange artifacts you've been showing in the museums, to some of the strange features they seem to possess, the more I learn about the Olmec culture, uh, really the more fascinated I become. Hey everyone, Derek here. So in this episode, we're going to travel around a bit. We'll head up to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, to the Chichen Itza archaeological site, and we're going to examine a structure where something strange and mysterious was discovered underneath it. Next, we'll go further north to the great state of Arizona, and we're gonna look at a 1915 report I found in the digital archives of the Library of Congress that discusses something very strange that was discovered in a cave. And last but not least, we're gonna go to one of my favorite places on planet Earth, that is the present day country of Peru. And we are going to talk about an incredible megalithic structure that I got to visit this past October on our Peru tour that blew my mind. You are not gonna wanna miss this episode, but before we jump into these exciting topics, I wanna highlight two of our upcoming tours. Coming up this May 8th through the 19th, we have the literal trip of a lifetime. It's our Stargate Voyager Egypt tour. You can join me and fellow researcher and podcaster Nikiana Jones, as well as Egyptologist and author Muhammad Ibrahim. This is going to be an epic trip. Uh, we are going to see 20 plus of the most amazing sites in ancient Egypt that will culminate in a private after hours, two hour long visit inside the greatest structure on planet Earth the Great Pyramid of Giza, where we're gonna have the whole pyramid to ourselves. We're gonna to get to explore every chamber and passageway, and you are gonna learn on this tour the hidden secrets of Egypt. You're gonna see what most tourists miss, and that's all the evidence of lost ancient technology at all of these sites. We literally have uh, one of the premier Egypt guides in the whole world in Muhammad Ibrahim and you will learn the hidden history of Egypt that points to a, a far older civilization that possessed lost ancient technology as building the pyramids. You can get $200 off right now for a limited time. Um, just use code EGYPT2024, all caps, and you can go to stargatevoyager.com slash tours for all the info. Okay, let's travel to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula to the Chichen Itza archaeological site where there's a mysterious structure known as the ossuary. And it's also been dubbed the high priest's tomb or temple. Adorned at its corners with reliefs of the rain god Chalk, this structure stands over 30 feet high and features nine staggered layers on each four sides. And on each side is this massive staircase that descends down, flanked by feathered serpent heads on each side. Located at the top center between uh, two carved serpents. So if you can picture going up to the top of this step pyramid, there is an entrance. And this entrance is lined with stones. And it descends down vertically to the base of this pyramid. Now this passageway continues about another 40 feet past the base of the pyramid. And guess what? It leads into a cave where seven tombs were discovered along with skeletons, rock crystals, copper bells, and jade artifacts. Once you get into the cave, there is then a 10-mile long tunnel that leads from this cave to another nearby Mayan city, which is likely um, Yaxuna site, I believe. Again, according to tradition, this tunnel or cavern represents the gate between the world of the dead or paradise. 
Again, click the link in the show notes to see these photographs if you're not seeing them now. Since we're on the topic of Mexico, I've got to give a shameless plug to another tour coming up this year in November. And that's our Mind Mysteries tour in Tulum right here on Mexico's beautiful Yucatan Peninsula. And this tour is our lowest priced tour of the year already. And on top of that, the first eight registrants um, can get $300 off the registration price to lock in the early bird price, bringing it down to $1,999. This is a real adventure style tour where we are going to dive deep into the mysteries of the Maya. We're going to tour the incredible ruins at Tulum, Mexico and see the Mayan ancient temples. We're going to go on an incredible zip line adventure one day. On another day, we're going to dive deep into this beautiful crystal clear lagoon and go snorkeling. We're going to check out the ancient Mayan cenotes uh, and dive into those. It's going to be an incredible tour. I hope you'll join us. Go to stargatevoyager.com slash tours for more info. Okay, now let's head even further north to one of the greatest states in the U.S., the great state of Arizona, um, where I want to share with you a 1915 report I found. Uh, one of my hobbies is to search through the digital archives of the Library of Congress. Now, it's crazy what you can find. So here's what I found. This is a 1915 report. So this uh, article comes from the Snowflake Herald, December 24th, 1915. And um, you can click the link in the show notes to see this actual um, article from the Digital Archives of the Library of Congress. And you can see the screenshots I took of it. And here's what the report reads. Hans Augustus, James Hansen, and Leo Ellsworth returned Monday from a white river where they have been the past six weeks hauling wood for the Indian agency. They report the finding of a skeleton of a horned man. The skeleton was three feet tall, with well-defined horns about two inches long near the temples. The skeleton was found near the east fork of a white river close to a large cave. It was of a fully developed man and was on exhibition at White River several days before being sent to, to a museum in Washington City. So I was literally reading the article verbatim there. Um, some of my thoughts and my takeaways on this is being that these guys were out hauling wood near uh, White River uh, for an Indian agency, I did a quick map search and found, and you can do the same search, I found an unincorporated community in Arizona known as White River, about three hours east of Phoenix. You can literally see it on Google Maps. And guess what? It's located between Mount Baldy there and the Apache Reservation. So this looks like it matches the uh, almost exact area mentioned in the newspaper. And again, the newspaper article states that the specimen was found near the White River and close to a large cave. Uh, so very interesting. Again, there's White River. You can see that on the map as well. And being that it's near Mount Baldy, I'm sure there's all kinds of caves. I wonder if this horned man or humanoid, I should say, did he live inside the cave? It's interesting that they, the article mentions he was found near a cave. I think it's important to note that the article states the specimen was, quote, three feet tall with well-defined horns, about two inches long near the temples. Uh, if this isn't descriptive enough, it goes on to say it was of a fully developed man. So if we are to believe these eyewitness accounts in this article, I think we can eliminate the idea that this was some sort of animal. Some other questions that pop into my head is, I wonder... How old the skeleton appeared upon discovery, meaning did it look like it had just died, or did it look did it look like it was very ancient and had been dead for hundreds or thousands of years? My other question is at three feet tall with two inch horns, could this have been some sort of ancient hybrid, or might there have been a chimeric connection to the reservation? Uh, nearby. 
at the end of the day, it is a very interesting report. Um, and again, don't take my word for it. This is in the government's digital archives of the Library of Congress. Okay, last but not least, let's travel to one of my favorite places on Earth, Peru. And I want to talk to you about the mysterious moon calendar of Kia Rumiak. So I was just in Peru this last October. It was the most incredible time. And one of my favorite sites of all is this site known as Kia Rumiak. It's located about an hour or so from Cusco. So it's quite off the good old beaten path. But this is one of the most beautiful, picturesque settings you can imagine. It's right up there, I would say, like with Machu Picchu is just one of the most beautiful sites. But in its own different way, this is not the jungle. This is kind of higher in the plains above Cusco. You're in the Andes Mountains, but below you is just the most picturesque, beautiful farmlands. Uh, but this is a site shrouded in mystery. And as you start to make your way up the mountainside, you see all these incredible Inca ruins. You begin to see mortarless megalithic walls. And then there is a one-of-a-kind treasure that's really the only thing like it really that we have, I believe, in Peru. What appears to be a precision-cut crescent moon in this giant boulder. Again, if you're listening to the audio only of this episode, click the link in the show notes to see the article version and these photos. Kia Rumiak, let's break down this word. Kia translates as moon, and Rumiak translates as stones of. So in English, Kia Rumiak translates as stones of the moon. And many researchers theorize that this was some sort of ancient lunar calendar or solar clock. And it was so incredible to not just to walk up to it, but I crawled up the side and um, was able to get real close to it, lean over to it. I was I was careful not to get inside of it because in no way would I want to damage this thing. But you can see it's made from very hard andesite stone. And some also claim that when the sunlight hits this moon calendar at a specific time, you can even see the eye of a puma inside. And I wouldn't doubt it because um, the Puma imagery is hidden everywhere by the ancient megalithic builders in Peru. Again, according to mainstream, this is an Inca construction. But did the Inca create this, or did they later discover it and, and, and then build an entire ceremonial site around it? That's what I lean towards, that this is far older. Uh, you get up close, and you can just kind of see the erosion, uh, the weathering, again, the precision cuts. When we know, when we look at the tools the Inca had, they had softer copper chisels and hammers. Uh, it's just hard for me to believe that they could cut this to such precision into harder andesite stone with those softer tools. And with that, I can't close without inviting you to join me for our 2024 Peru and Bolivia tour. This will be a South America adventure like none other. August 1st through the 12th, 2004. And guess what? For a very limited time, you can get $500 off this tour. That's right, $500 off. So I hope you'll consider joining us. We're going to see all of the most famous sites like Machu Picchu, Sacsayhuaman, Ollante Tambo. But then we're going to go off the beaten path. We're going to go dip into Bolivia and see Pumapunku. We're going to go visit a very little known museum in Bolivia near Lake Titicaca that houses some of the strangest elongated skulls I have ever seen. And so we're going to do stuff like that that's way off the beaten path. I have worked very hard with our tour company to detail out each day of this tour. It's going to be the most incredible expedition of a lifetime, and I hope you'll consider joining us. Go to StargateVoyager.com slash tours for all the info. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and until next time, keep exploring.